If you've ever tried to add a long pause to one of your zaps, you've probably run into the frustrating 30 day limit in Zapier's delay action. Fortunately, there is a very easy way to get around this limit and delay your automated actions for as long as you'd like. All you need is a free database app like Airtable or SmartSuite, and today I'm gonna to show you how it all works. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we use automation providers like Zapier along with Airtable to create robust automated infrastructure for our members. If you'd like to learn more about our services, check out our website at xray.tech. To see more automation tips and tutorials every week, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new way to save time. In this video, I'm going to show you how to delay any workflow in Zapier for as long as you'd like. All you have to do is split your automation into two zaps and use an Airtable base to send data between them. It's very simple, and I've even prepared an Airtable template that you can copy to quickly get started. Now let's jump into it. First, I'm going to quickly explain what the finished workflow looks like. Then I'm going to break it down for you step by step. To get around the 30 day limit, we're actually going to build two related zaps instead of just one. The first zap will have a trigger that launches your whole workflow, as well as any other actions you want to perform right away, if any. Then, the zap will end with a step that creates a record in Airtable. In the second step, the automation will store several pieces of data that will be used in the second zap. Most importantly, you'll want to include some date-time data so that Airtable can calculate when the second automation should run. Within your database, you'll create a view for records that have reached their calculated date. Finally, your second zap will be triggered whenever a record enters your specified Airtable view, running some automated actions and completing your workflow. Now, if you've been Googling this problem before, you may have seen Zapier's official recommended workaround, which involves creating events in Google Calendar. That method works fine too, I guess, but using Airtable instead opens up way more possibilities to provide your automations with additional data and control how they run. At X-Ray, when we need to move data between different automations, we always prefer to use Airtable as an operational database that manages the flow of information. It's a highly versatile and widely applicable technique, so that's what I want to show you today. Even though the finished workflow will start off with a zap, we're actually going to begin by preparing the Airtable base that connects your two automations. To get started, you can copy this Airtable base to your own workspace. You can find this template in this video's resources board linked in the description. Copying our template will give you a pre-made formula and some useful views to make things easier. If you don't have an Airtable account yet, don't worry, you can make one for free and their free plan is all you'll need for this tutorial. Even if you've never used Airtable, you should be able to follow along with this demonstration. But if you'd like to learn more about the basics of the app, you can check out our beginner's guide to learn the ropes. Now let's take a look at this template base and how it's set up. Our template base consists of just one table and a few key fields to get you started. First, the primary field is set to name. This field creates a title or label for each record in the base. We've set it up as a formula that combines the contents of the next two fields. Using a formula for your primary field makes it easy to keep all your record names consistent and lets you easily update them en masse whenever you want. Next, we've included a couple of placeholders for any data you want to include. These are just single line text fields called data1 and data2. Any data that you want to collect from your first zap and send to your second zap will need to be stored in Airtable with fields like these. For our example, I'll edit these into fields for email address and full name. When you copy this base, feel free to edit these placeholders, add more fields, or delete the ones you don't need. Now let's look at the fields that will let us calculate a delay for any length of time that we want. First, there's this simple date field. You'll need to include a date field for any dates that are involved in the final calculation. For our example, we just need one date to indicate when the email was received. You may need additional date fields for your use case. Also, make sure to consider how you want to use time in your date fields. Airtable allows you to display a time in any date field, but it's not required. If you do enable time, make sure the time zone is set correctly. This next field is where the magic happens. In this calculated date field, you can calculate the date when your second zap will run. For our example, we've written a formula that adds 60 days to the original date field. However, you can easily edit this formula to add any amount of time that you want. Just replace day with something like week or year and replace 60 with the interval you want to use. I've provided some relevant Airtable help docs in this video's resources board so you can explore your options with this formula. You can find the resources board in the description. When you're done editing your formula, click save to commit your changes. 
Note that we've included a record created field. This is a unique field that displays the date the Airtable record was created. This field is populated automatically and is not editable. In some cases, you may want to use this date in your formula instead of referring to a date sent from Zapier. However, in our example, we'll just use the date sent in Zapier. When a record's calculated date is equal to today's date, then that record will enter this view called launch second zap. That's because this view's filter is set to calculated date is today. So 60 days from now, this record will enter this view, prompting the second zap to run, once we've built that zap, of course. You may have noticed that any record without a date entry has this big obnoxious error text in the calculated date field. Since there's no date to add 60 days to, the formula doesn't work, and it just displays this error text. If that bugs you as much as it bugs us, then you can replace this error text with a less obtrusive message. You can use the second version of our formula instead. You'll find that version in a field called calculated date with if. This formula is a bit more complicated. You can see that we still have the same date add formula at the heart of it, but there's also a date time format expression as well as an if statement that checks whether or not there's a date to work with. Ultimately, if you're new to Airtable, you'll probably prefer the simpler version, but we've added both to the template so you can pick yourself. Then you can just hide the field that you don't want to use or delete it. Note that we've marked both formula fields with a lightning bolt emoji. Using emoji labels like this will make things much easier when you start working with this Airtable base in Zapier. These formula fields won't accept direct input, but Zapier will still give you the option to enter data directly into the calculated date field. The emoji, which we'll see in Zapier 2, will let us know that these fields are populated by a formula and should be left alone. If you'd like to add your own emoji codes, both Mac and Windows have shortcuts to open up the emoji menu. Check out the resources board in the description of this video for a list of relevant shortcuts. Finally, the last field in this template table is a checkbox called Launch Now. This field is optional, but it's a good example of why we like to use Airtable to skirt around Zapier's delay limit instead of using something like Google Calendar. If you change your mind and want to launch the second zap immediately instead of waiting 60 days, you could just check this box. The second condition in this views filter will allow any record that has been manually checked off. With Airtable, you can easily set up multiple filter conditions for a record to enter a specific view. That's the basic setup, but you should feel free to customize all of these fields to fit your specific use case. In general, just remember that any data you want to send to your second zap needs to be saved or calculated here in Airtable first. Once your base is set up to your liking, it's time to build the zaps for this automated workflow. Now that our Airtable base is all set, let's build the first zap in this workflow. The first zap can trigger under whatever conditions you'd like. In our example, this app will run whenever we add a custom label to an email in Gmail. Once your trigger is configured, give it a test to load in some test data. Next, you can add any other actions you want your zap to perform before the pause. Once you've added all the additional actions you want, finish the zap with an Airtable step. Select Create a new record as the action. Sign into your Airtable account to authorize Zapier to act on your behalf. Then, choose the base and table that the new record should be created in. This will be the template base that you copied earlier and configured to your liking. Once you've selected the right table, you can map data retrieved from earlier steps to your Airtable fields. I'll fill in data for the sender's name, their email address, and the date the email was received. Note that we can see those lightning emojis for the formula fields, so we know not to map anything to them. Once you've mapped all the data you need to each appropriate Airtable field, give the step a test. After a few moments, you should see a success message in Zapier. Just make sure to check Airtable as well to confirm that all the data looks correct. You'll especially want to make sure that the calculated date is what you expected. Ours is 60 days after the original date, just like we wanted. This first zap has been successfully set up to send data to Airtable. Now let's build the second zap, which will run after your specified delay. To begin, configure the zap's trigger. Choose Airtable as the app and select New Record as the event. Sign into the same Airtable account as before and choose the correct table and base. You'll also want to limit this trigger to only watch a specific view. Select the Launch Second Zap view or whatever you renamed it to. Next, we'll need to test this trigger, but to do that, we'll need to have a record in the Launch Second Zap view. 
Ultimately, there's no perfect way to test a months long delay in a couple of minutes, but you have a few good options. First, you could just check a record manually to add it to the view. This will confirm that the second zap runs the way that you want and uses real data created by your apps. On the other hand, it doesn't technically confirm that the formula works. Your second option is to create a record with its original date set in the past. For example, that would mean making a record with its original date set to 60 days ago. That will confirm that the formula works, but you may need to create fake test data if you don't have data created at exactly the right time. Just to be safe, I'll test the zap with both methods. So to test it both ways, I'll start by checking the box on one of my test records. That will instantly make it appear in the launch second zap view. Next, I'll use this form view to add a new record to the table. I'll set the date to be 60 days in the past, and I'll submit the form to add the record to the table. With both test records ready, I'll switch back over to Zapier and I'll test the second Zaps trigger again. The test pulls in both of the records that I was looking for. Now, you can finish this Zap by adding any additional actions you want the automation to perform after the delay. For our example, we just need to add a Gmail step that sends an automated message. Once you've added and tested all the actions you want, your second zap will be all set. Just make sure that both of your zaps are published and turned on before you start using them. Now, your first zap will trigger as usual, then send data to Airtable. Then, the second zap will run after your desired delay, using the data you stored in the Airtable base. Like any platform, Zapier has its share of technical limitations, but with a simple database in Airtable, you can easily get around their 30-day limit in the delay step and pause your automated workflows for as long as you want. Let us know in the comments below if there are any other Zapier tips or workarounds you'd like to see us cover on the channel. Your suggestion could become one of our next videos. If you've enjoyed this video, prove you're human, like and subscribe for more automation tips every single week. If you'd like to learn more about low-code automation and workflow design, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can find all those links in the resources board down below, and as always, find your focus and stay in flow. Trying to future-proof yourself? Start designing the way your team works with no-code tools, automation, and AI. An X-Ray's workflow design course will show you how to break down every part of a process to find the best opportunities for automation and how to seamlessly integrate those automations into your team's daily work. You'll learn how to create time for your entire team, get more reliable results, and give everyone a newfound clarity and confidence in their work. Go to course.xray.tech to learn more. The entire package includes over two hours of premium video content, challenging example projects, and tons of helpful resources. The course costs just $250 and gives you lifetime access to a Slack community of workflow designers building systems in dozens of different industries. Space is limited, so join the free waiting list to get notified as soon as the course is live later this year. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon in our workflow designer course.